Ever since Arcane came out, there was one question that kept coming up. Is Arcane canon? Well, it was confirmed that Arcane is different. And that apparently it shouldn't be taken as the truth over the game. So they are essentially saying that Arcane is not exactly canon compared to the core universe. Which is exactly the opposite of what everyone wants. I've heard that Riot is still hesitant whether they want to turn this into the canon story. To which I have to say, yes Riot, everyone wants Arcane to be canon. I don't think there is a single person who wouldn't want that. But here's the thing, Riot doesn't need to necessarily turn Arcane into the main canon universe. Now, I have never seen a Marvel movie, but I know that the cinematic universe is different from the core universe which is in the comics. It seems like Riot may be doing the same thing here. It's that the Arcane universe may be different from the canon core universe. Which is fine, but I'm sad to see that some people will be confused. Because all of the characters in Arcane changed from their canon versions. And so today, for once, let me be the nerdy guy who reads everything. You know all of those people who have read the Game of Thrones books and they talked about how different it is from the TV series? I've never been one of those. But today, I will be. Because in this video, we're gonna talk about all the differences between the core canon universe and the arcane universe. And we'll see if there is any way to make arcane canon. Now of course I will not talk about the entire story of all the champions. I will only talk about the stories up until the point where Arcane would end, because the rest of the story may still be referenced in season 2. So now without further ado, let's start with the main characters of Arcane. Victor and Jace. In the core universe, Jace's origins may be different. His family, House Talis, was never mentioned. We only know that after he got into science, he was offered patronage in clan Jayopara, which was one of Piltover's most respected ruling clans. Now, not only have we never heard of Jayopara in Arcane, but in Arcane, Jace actually gets patronage in the Kiraman family, which is something totally different. According to Jace's bio, Clan Jayopara was one of the first clans to explore Shurima and find the Hex Crystals. Curiously enough, in Camille's story it is said that the Pharaoh's family were the first to find the Hex Crystals. So we actually don't know which one of these was the first one. But at least House Pharaoh's was referenced in Arcane. Clan Jayopara, where Jace is supposed to be, never even appeared there. Anyway, after Jace accepted the offer and he joined the clan, he spent most of his early years constructing potential Hextech devices and designing transformable multi-tools for the working class. The difference here is that in the core universe, basic Hextech was already developed. It wasn't advanced, there were no major Hextech devices, unless you maybe count Camille, but you know, we don't actually know how old she is, but in Arcane, it was Jace who invented Hextech. In the core universe, Jace's personality is also different. He is supposed to be far more arrogant than he is in Arcane. He was described as dismissive and unwilling to slow his pace to help his peers catch up. It was so bad, most people didn't want to work with him. And as he grew older, his patience grew even shorter. So yeah, Jace is supposed to be a pretty awful guy. While in Arcane, he actually cared about the people around him. And he even stopped Hextech development for the safety of people. In the core universe, especially when he was younger, that would be out of character. Sometime later, he finally found a person who was able to keep up with his intellect. And that person was Victor. In the core universe, they met at a mandatory progress day party. And they bonded over the fact that neither of them wanted to be there. In Arcane, they met after Jinx blew up his lab. Anyway, at this progress day party, Victor expanded Jace's intellectual horizons, and he challenged many of his assumptions. We then learned that while Jace wanted to help humanity through versatile technology, Victor wanted to solve problems inherent to humanity itself, such as physical decay or illogical prejudice. They constantly argued with each other, but their conflicts never got personal. They respected each other's work, because they still had a common goal. In Arcane, you can rarely ever see them argue over an invention. 
Later, the two invent a mechanized construction suit for Piltover's dock workers. It was light enough to not let the workers drown, but sturdy enough to enhance their strength. Finally, the two inventors got into a major argument when Victor wanted to give the suit an implant that would increase the wearer's strength and prevent them from getting tired, panicking or disobeying instructions from their superiors. You see, Victor wanted to do this because he knew it would dramatically reduce the number of accidents. But Jace didn't want to go through with it because he found the removal of free will immoral. They disagreed with each other so much, the two nearly fought over this. But once again, it ended with Jace being an awful person. He ran up into the academy and warned the professors about Victor's invention. Because of this, Victor was stripped of his honor and kicked out of the scientific community. After losing his only real friend, Jace returned back to his awful arrogant personality and he studied alone. This is where he got a hold of a Hextech gem. In Arcane, he got it from the Kiraman family. Here, he got it through Clan Jayopara, but in a really different way. When Clan Jayopara obtained a Hextech gem, none of their students were able to tap into its power. But at that point, Jace was so arrogant, his superiors wanted to teach him a lesson. And so they punished him by not even offering the gem to him. Only after everyone else failed. As the very last person, they finally gave Jace a chance. And so he did his own experiments on it. These experiments were very similar to what we saw in Arcane, but in the core universe he did those without Victor. However, these experiments led into a power spike. You know, in Arcane it actually exploded. And this power spike was detected by Victor. And so he arrived at Jace's lab, demanding only one thing. You see, Victor also spent some time alone, working on his own projects, and he figured out how to save everyone. He knew how to eradicate disease, hunger and hatred. If Jace joined him, they could save humanity from itself. All he needed was the Hextech gem for what he called a glorious evolution. Jace disagreed, telling Victor that what he really needed was a moral compass, and the two started a fight. Hilariously enough, even though in Arcane Victor is very fragile, in the core universe, Victor grabbed the crystal and knocked Jace unconscious with it. Just picture that in your head. Anyway, Victor then returned back to his lab, did all sorts of things to himself, and Jace used his own Hextech powered inventions to fight him. That's really all we need to know about these two. Most of these scenes will be adapted into Arcane in Season 2. So the major differences from Arcane was that Jace's hammer was a mining tool which he powered up by a small shard of the Hextech crystal, which he got during the experiments. The Atlas gauntlets were not actually his invention, he just figured out how to power them up. But more than that, he had no connection to the Kiraman family whatsoever. So in the core universe, Caitlyn and Jace haven't really talked to each other that much. But from Victor's perspective, this story has some more differences. The reason why Victor cares about the mind affecting implants is because Victor comes from Zone, just like in Arcane, and there he studied all the frequent accidents. After doing so, he found out it all came not to mechanical failure, but to human error. That's why he's heavily into augmentation. He knows that most of human suffering comes from humans. Anyway, after taking interest in safety, Victor was accepted into the Ferdersen Camforge, where he worked as a safety inventor. Within a month of him working there, the Camforge dropped down to zero accidents. And this is where we got a big difference. When he was 19, he was surprised to be offered a place in Zon's prestigious Academy of Techmaturgy. There, Victor attracted the eye of Stanwyck Padidli who convinced Victor to leave Zorn and go to the Academy of Piltover instead. So in the core universe, it was Stanwyck Padidli who convinced Victor to go to Piltover instead of staying in Zorn. In Arcane, it was revealed it was Heimerdinger who offered him a place in Piltover, so he skipped Zorn entirely. And that's because in Arcane, Stanwyck was long dead, so they just straight up removed that character. They confirmed this in one of the episodes, you can even see Stanwyck's statue there. But this is where another major difference comes in. In the core universe, 
By now, the two cities were known as Piltover and Zone. In Arcane, that is not the case. There, the entire city is simply Piltover. And the possibility of the city splitting into two and being called Piltover and Zone was only being voted in at the very end of Season 1. So throughout all of those stories in Arcane, Zone didn't exist. They simply called it the Undercity. So that's why in Arcane, Victor being at the University of Zone wouldn't make sense. Because in Arcane, Zone doesn't exist. It will likely become a thing at the beginning of Season 2 after the two halves finally split. Anyway, as we mentioned in Jace's half, the two meet at a party, but in Victor's bio we learn that while the two were still friends, there was a chemical spill that destroyed an entire district of Zone. This is likely the same disaster that led into the augmentation of Oriana, but that's not important now. What's important is that during this disaster, Victor returned home to help in the civilian rescues. However, it was dangerous to be there in person. The streets were full of toxic fumes. And so, Victor constructed Blitzcrank to help in the cleanup. Blitzcrank was such a good creation, he started to think on his own. Which wasn't really Victor's intention. In the story, the two kinda became friends. And they tried to help those affected by the toxins. But since, even when working together, the two couldn't prevent more death, they just parted ways. And since Blitzcrank was developing his own personality, Victor just let him go off and do whatever he wanted. After all, Blitzcrank was developed to help people and save lives. Of course, Blitzcrank didn't appear in Arcane, but I do believe they may be saving him for Season 2. They did reference cranking stuff a couple of times in Season 1. Anyway, after this disaster was over, when Victor returned back to Piltover, he learned that Professor Stanwyck stole credit for Blitzcrank's creation. And when Victor filed a complaint about it, nobody believed him. This made him return to his inventions with Jace. And together they created the diving suit and the rest of the story happened. So as you can see, the differences are actually quite big. Victor has no sickness in the core universe. Also, his story heavily relies on Stanwyck Padidli, who was quite an ass. But that person isn't even alive in Arcane. Also in Arcane, it was Heimerdinger who praised him. While in the core universe, that wasn't the case. Also, no Sky. And no Hexcore being developed with Jace. So while the glorious evolution of Victor will be interesting to watch in Arcane, because there he is literally saving his own life, in the core universe, he is simply improving his own body. He wants to make sure he can't make mistakes, which would put people into dangerous situations. He is doing it to save lives, not just his own. Now, with these two dealt with, let's now move on to the other main characters. There is Vi. Vi's origins are actually quite different. This is what the bio says. Though she had ended up in the crumbling Hope House orphanage, a notorious mad sum scrapper claimed to have found her adrift in a bassinet large enough for two in the ruins of a collapsed cam lab. So yeah, in the core universe, Vi was an orphan straight up from the beginning. But in Arcane, she was not an orphan up until the uprising, which is where her parents got killed and where Vander found her. Anyway, in the core universe, while being an orphan, Vi formed a gang. And she did all the typical street kid stuff. This is very similar to what she did with Milo and Clagger. And she then found a mentor in the owner of a bar on the edge of the lanes. Of course, this is where the bio is referencing Vander. But his name was never revealed because it was kept a secret for Arcane. So yes, Vander is canon. We then learned that this mentor helped her calm her self-destructive tendencies and refined her moral code. We then get to the story of how she got her gauntlets, which is also very different. She planned a heist of a rich mine. She needed more people to pull it off, and so she brought in the Factory Wood Fiends gang. During the heist, this gang killed the owner of the mines, the one who was supposed to get all the payment which they were looking for. And in doing so, the gang also trapped all the other miners in the tunnels. Even as both gangs fled with the loot, Vi didn't want to let innocent people die. And so she grabbed a pair of mining oversized pulverizer gauntlets and used them to smash open a path to free the miners. Then, still wearing the gauntlets, she gave the entire Fiends gang, and I quote, a legendary beating. 
this is where the storyline of Arcane would have ended. But interestingly enough, Vi still references the Civil War of Arcane. This is what it says. Vi eventually disappeared from Zone during a time of great upheaval, when tensions with Piltover were running high. This is likely referencing what is going to happen in Season 2. Because the story then says that when the streets had to be calmed, the Sheriff of Piltover arrived, together with her new partner, Vi. So yeah, her story in the core universe doesn't really tell us why she joined the Wardens. Also, by the way, in the core universe, the Enforcers are called the Wardens. Anyway, the biggest difference in her story is that there was no Jinx. At all. And no Silco, even though in Arcane, Jinx is the very core of Vi's story. Well, that's why everyone wants Arcane to be canon. Now, when it comes to Jinx, her entire canon story that would match Arcane Season 1 is explained in the very first paragraph of her bio. So, because it's so short, let's just read it. While most look at Jinx and see only a mad woman wielding an array of dangerous weapons, a few remember as a relatively innocent girl from Zorn, a tinkerer with big ideas who never quite fit in. No one knows for certain what happened to turn that sweet young child into a wildcard, infamous for her wantom acts of destruction. But once Jinx exploded onto the scene in Piltover, her unique talent for sowing anarchy instantly became the stuff of legend. That's it. No explanation of possible connections to Vi, Vander, or even a mention of Silco. That's because her story in the core universe is focusing on her present crazy days. Before Arcane, her past was a mystery. And now that past is kinda boring. Like, we know that Vi and Jinx were not together when they were kids. It's because their childhood is explained in Vi's bio. And as you heard, she was an orphan with a gang. That was it. So how did Jinx become crazy in the core universe? We still don't know. And once again, that's why people want Arcane to be canon. Then we get to Caitlyn. With all the differences around Arcane, Caitlyn might actually be the most faithful to her canon version. There, while her parents worked for the Wardens, Caitlyn did not. She was kinda just there, living off of her parents. And she had no connection to Vi or Jace, and in the core universe, Silco simply doesn't exist. So pretty much nothing that happened in Arcane Season 1 happened in her story. It all just skips to what might be happening in Season 2. Because then, during a progress day, her parents get kidnapped by a mysterious criminal known as C. But again, that might happen in Season 2. And lastly, if you're wondering about the rifle, the Hextech rifle replaces her hunting musket after she rescues her parents and she becomes an investigator. Once again, none of this happened in Arcane, but it is possible it may still come. But yeah, Caitlyn might be the most faithful to her canon version, because there Arcane is just skipped, and so there is not much to change. Except for the fact that she didn't know Vi or Jace. Then we get to Singed, who is a roller coaster. It always seemed like they changed something about him, but then in a minor reveal it all snaps back in place. So for the vast majority, it seems like Singed was kept the same. In the core universe, Singed was fascinated by the interactions of the natural world, so he pursued a scholarship at the University of Piltover. His research into the natural science was groundbreaking, but slowly people stopped paying attention to his work as everyone turned towards Hextech instead. So he turns towards alchemy, but that made all the other scientists laugh at him. And slowly, as his fundings had dried up, he was forced out of the university and out of Piltover. This is how he ended up in Zone. In Arcane, it was confirmed that Singed also previously worked in Piltover. But for unknown reasons, he parted ways with Heimerdinger. So regarding Singed's origins, Arcane stayed quite faithful to him. The canon story then simply says that in Zorn, his experiments, often of questionable ethicality, cast a wide net, augmenting humans, animals and even the fusion of the two, among countless other endeavors. Of course, this is referencing Warwick. During Arcane, after Singed got burned, he started covering his face, 
Which was weird, because in the core universe, Singed is wearing the bandages because Warwick scarred his face during his transformation. It wasn't because of the chemical burns. But then, at the end of season 1, it was revealed that Singed was working on Warwick the entire time. So once again, everything snapped back together, and now in Arcane it again made sense why he had the bandages. It is because Warwick scarred him. And when it comes to Warwick, in the core universe it was mentioned that Singed picked him up off of a street near a bar. He was pretty much a random person. A gangster who put his blade aside, who tried to pick up a new name to live a better life, but the sins of his past caught up to him. That's pretty much the description of Warwick when he was a human. But, you know, in Arcane it is pretty much confirmed that it is Vander. Anyway, back to Singed. Singed also created chemicals that allowed him to work tirelessly before he would collapse and sleep for days. Now, Shimmer was never mentioned. But it is possible that this is what the story is referencing. In fact, interestingly enough, Shimmer was never actually mentioned anywhere in the canon universe. It is sometimes referenced, for example in Mundo's story, but it is never named. So it feels like even though Riot knew that Shimmer would be a thing because Arcane was in development for such a long time, they never called it Shimmer because they wanted to keep it a secret before Arcane. So while technically Shimmer may not be canon, because it was never named anywhere, I think at this point it is unavoidable, and it will be name dropped in the future. But yeah, once again, because Silco technically doesn't exist in the core universe, that entire storyline was skipped, and Shimmer is kind of a mystery there. After that storyline, however, Singed was approached by Noxians, and with sufficient fundings, he was allowed to continue his experiments, but he would also make weapons for the Noxians. Who knows, maybe that comes in Season 2 as well. But the main differences are that Singed doesn't have a daughter in the core universe, Shimmer pretty much doesn't exist, there is no connection to Victor, no connection to Ryo, and no storyline with Silco, which is pretty massive. Then there is Echo, who is totally different. You see, in the core universe, Echo's parents worked for many hours in dangerous factories so that they could afford to send Echo up to Piltover. Because yes, in the core universe, Echo's parents are actually alive. In Arcane, it seems like he is just an orphan. Now of course, even though his parents want to send him up to Piltover, Echo respects his Zonite origins. He knows Piltover doesn't care about Zon. And he knows that Zon has far better potential for his inventions. So he himself just doesn't want to go there. He wants to stay in Zon. Then in Zon he befriends scrappy orphans and they form somewhat of a gang which is called Lost Children of Zon. This is pretty much the alternative to Firelights, which don't exist in the core universe. Then the story mentions that he found a hex crystal in a demolished lab, which most likely belonged to Victor, and which was destroyed by Jace a bit later on. This is most likely going to be some kind of an alternative story for Arcane in Season 2, because he still needs a Hextech gem to create his Z drive, and I assume the Z drive will be a thing in Arcane Season 2. Lastly, after each day in the streets, Echo always returns home, and there his stories with his parents are some of the most heartwarming stories in League of Legends. After he creates the Z-Drive, which allows him to briefly rewind time, what he does is that he sits at home, he waits for his parents to get home tired from their work, and they all just sit at a table as a family together, and Echo keeps rewinding time so he can sit with them for as long as possible. Seriously, these interactions are just gone from Arcane. Because there we don't even know if those parents are alive. But speaking of Echo's parental figures, we need to talk about his new buddy, Heimerdinger. You see, Heimerdinger in Arcane is a really fleshed out character. He is full of charisma, always there to help people. He has rich history with Piltover. 200 years ago he's been there during its foundation. He is the forefather of the entire place and the highest counselor. So when we compare it to all the stories he has in the core universe... Yeah, I think Arcane's story wins.